I had to uh, contact a good friend of Michael Bazin's show, Dr. Joy DeGruy, author of uh, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. And the reason why I contacted you, Dr. McGrew, is that I'm post traumatic right now. I'm post traumatic Trayvon Martin. And a lot of people are as well. This, this is something we can't just let go of. Why shouldn't we and why can't we? Well, for obvious reasons, we can't let go of it. It's, a, it's just, just a huge injustice, and it hurts us. I think what has psychologically happened to everyone is we look at that boy and we see us. We see our children. We see the people we love. And we also see innocence. So, you know, it, it makes sense that there should be some righteous indignation. Many people thought we were past at least this point, but it, it seems to me that this is just history repeating itself all over again. Absolutely. What do you say to that? Two things that I would, I would want listeners to pay attention to. First of all, if we understand history, we recognize that the entire country, indeed the world, as, as driven by the United States, has been desensitized to caring, hence Katrina. There is a lack of empathy, but I'm going to cite two laws that might help people understand why this becomes uh, more of the same. Gotcha. The first law I'm going to cite is called the Casual Killing Act. And the Casual Killing Act was enacted in Virginia in 1705. Now listen very carefully to this. And if any slave resistors, master or owner or other person, by his or her order, correcting such slave, and shall happen to be killed in such correction, it shall not be counted felony, but the master owner and every other person so giving correction shall be acquitted of all punishment and accusation for the same, as if such accident had never happened. Okay, so what you have to understand about that is that, and of course the strange thing about this is this was largely enacted for white women who were beating black children to death, wow. who were really the heirs of their, their husbands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you have to understand is that um, part of this was a level of dehumanization that said, well, my, I'm good, my goodness, you were just correcting them? You, you, are, you have no even sense that you're dealing with a human being, being at this yep. point. Now, in 1793, listen very carefully to this one, we have something called the Fugitive Slave Law. It is not necessary that persons interfering should know that the persons claimed are slaves. If the claimant has made the declaration that they are such, though he should only assert it to the fugitive themselves, indeed, it could not be expected that the claimant would be required the trouble of repeating this to persons who might be disposed to interfere. Should anyone interfere at all after the declaration of the claimant, he is liable and responsible to the provisions of the law in such cases. In other words, I said that this is a, a slave, and it's an escaped slave, and that's all I need to do. And no one should interfere if I just said it. So you're looking at... That sounds this like is, this case. Yes, this is a free right. person. It does. You just declare <laughs> as a slave, and you just take him. And, of course, more egregious is if you could just kill him. So if you put them together, I don't need to explain it. I could just kill him. Are you following me? I am absolutely following you. Yes. And so these behaviors, and see, because these have been buried away from us, we don't know this history, but what has allowed such laws to be enacted is a feeling of total dehumanization for an entire group of people. Let's be very clear. And there is no sense of empathy. Matter of fact, we get distracted with everything else, and we follow the same course of mm -hmm. demonization, which, again, if we know our history, is not new either. This is not just people becoming um, uh, impassioned or ir irrational or emotional. Let's just take a look at the history. And it's a straight line, never stop. We have to understand this, and you know I've said this before, Michael, that as a clinician, you know, I'm trained clinically, but I've been living in, in this black skin for 54 years, mm -hmm. so I'm real clear on both ends. But here's what we know. Human beings cannot function with something called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you are holding two contradictory ideas at the same time. Hence, democracy and enslavement. That's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. So you have to resolve that notion of democracy, freedom, send me your poor, your tired, your huddled masses, all people created equal, one God, one, one nation under God. These are the statements, and then you commit genocide on Native people. N you have to reconcile those obvious, obvious the dissonance associated with that. How does one do that? You do that, listen very carefully, because this has been con repeated all the way up to Trayvon. You must first justify your behavior. That eases the conscience and lets everybody off the hook. 
Hence, Katrina, you know, they're all just looters and rapists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you have to justify your behavior. How do you do that? By relabeling the people to fit your behavior towards them, which makes somehow the behavior seem reasonable. So what we immediately do when everyone sees in this child his innocence, we see in him a child, first of all, we have to then demonize him. We have to demonize him while while correspondingly um, glorifying the other. Here's something I I find interesting now that you talk about that law, is that now a lot of African-American people are buying into the same thing. Stop talking about it. You know, let the system handle it. How can we be that naive? And I know why you're laughing. Tell me your response to the people who feel that way. Well, you know, we, uh, again, you got to read my book, (laughs) Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. You understand why people behave that way. You know, we, we are a people where if you were to just follow the law, tell those same people to follow that, the laws that they believe in this country, and you will find people, I will cite a couple of books so you can kind of take a look at it. Obviously, the new one, The New Jim Crow, written by an attorney, Michelle Alexander. Read that book. If not breaking rank by a 34-year police veteran, Norm Stamper, who wrote the book Breaking Rank, who said that it is intrinsically an unjust system and that they're trained within the academy that black people are the enemy. Wow. Now, this is a, this is a white man, 34 years, Ph.D., chief of police for Seattle, chief, chief of police for San Diego, wrote the book Breaking Rank 2005. So now you can keep believing that if you like, but everyone is making it very, very clear that this is a structural inequality. This is structural racism inherent and in, and, and part of every major um, institution in America. So let me ask you this, Dr. Leary. Why is it important that we see this thing through? Because all this evidence is coming out and everybody's wondering, why aren't they doing anything? We're not even talking about convicting this guy. We can't even get an arrest. What message does that send to us? It sends a very clear message that you are powerless and that you have absolutely no value That's in right. this country. And you know what? It can happen to you. <laughs> okay, so if we let this one fly, what you are going to see begin to happen in this country is beyond anything we've ever seen before. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell people, yeah. Dr. McGrew. This is so important. The whole country's watching. We're talking about it on national radio, which we never had national radio back then. You got Reverend Al Sharpton on MSNBC. You got the NAACP, Urban League, all these organizations. If we don't win this one, if we can't see this one through, and that's just the beginning. I want you to finish the sentence for me. If we don't see this through, what? We're going to be looking at unimaginable horrors. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Joy McGrew, formerly Dr. Joy Leary, check out the book, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. We're going to come back with on the show and keep her posted on this thing. I know she's watching this thing. And thank you so much for coming on, Doc. This is important stuff.